Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to talk to you about using napkins in your paper crafts. I've used napkins lots before because they are really inexpensive. They come in beautiful bright bold colours, lots of florals which I love but you can also get things like geometric designs. I've used them particularly in art journals before and if I just show you this one you can just about see in the background we've got this really pretty floral pattern and that's actually come from this particular napkin design but I want to take it into my card making today. By using napkins, you can really inexpensively create beautiful backing panels. You can then go ahead and you can emboss these panels if you want to. You can add texture paste and stamps and other layers to them afterwards. But I think it's a really fun way of creating your own background. Now I'm going to be working on three separate cards today using three designs of napkins. I got my napkins from eBay really inexpensively. They come in packs of five to 20 or 50 depending on how much you love the design obviously it depends on the pack size you purchase and I paid anything from one pound something up to about five pounds something for the packs I've then got myself three five by seven card bases this is at the moment and it does change sometimes my favorite card size and shape to work on I love a top fold card as well so I'm going to be creating three cards of this size I may well change the color of the base on some of these we'll see how the projects project progress and then I've got myself three separate panels to fit on these cards, which I'm going to cover with the napkins, simply because I don't want to be putting wet mediums directly onto my card base. If you do this, you're going to end up with warped and distorted card bases, and it really isn't a professional finish. So besides your napkins and your card bases, other things you're going to need is something like Mod Podge for gluing your napkins down. I like this because it's water based. I can mix it with additional water if I want to, if I want to have more of a fluid glue here. And you can also colour this if you wanted to for a different look, add glitter to it. But essentially it's a decoupage glue. So any brand of decoupage glue will work. If you use something like a collage medium, I know Ranger, Tim Holtz do a good one. That's great, but that is really, really resistant and afterwards so you do get a glossy finish this one is matte I've then got a water brush this is really important for adding shape and tearing your paper exactly where you need it so I'll be showing you how to use that in a little while I've also got myself a soft flat brush it's a little bit stained but I'm pretty sure that staining isn't going to come out on my project this is for applying my Mod Podge and lastly just a pair of scissors to cut into my card and my napkins after that, all you're going to need is any sort of embellishments or toppers that you need to finish off your cards. So I'm going to work on the largest panel first that I've cut. I've cut one large panel that's going to fit most of the front of my card, but I've also cut myself two smaller panels, and these are going to be just for the sort of more detailed ones. I'll show you what I mean in a little while. So for the larger panel, I'm going to use the paler, the more subtle design. And you'll notice when you open up your napkin that a lot of them, in fact, the majority of napkins do have around the edge a dotted detail. Now, this usually only extends around about an inch or two into the design. I tend to not use this if I can help it, if I've got enough of the design in the centre to use instead. So in the centre here, this is perfectly smooth. So I'm going to take the, um, the card, the mat that I want to use first. Um, I could try to avoid the creases, that's going to be really difficult and to be honest once you glue this down you're not going to see those creases anyway. So I would definitely just say go for the pattern that you like. Now I love this large floral, we've got a couple of them in here. This is a full one, I'm going to put that into the bottom corner of my panel and I'm going to cut round. And the way I find easiest is to then fold the napkin around your panel. And then with a pair of scissors, I'm just going to cut slightly wider than these fold lines. And this will give me a little bit of wiggle room too. So there's my rough shape, as you can see, uh, very roughly cut the edges, overlapping them, but we will trim those off later. So now what you need to do is separate the layers of your napkin. Most napkins come in two, three or four ply. So you need to start gently separating the layers. And don't think that once you've got one layer off that that's it. Usually there's another one. I've been caught out by this a few times. I've glued it down and then found the top layer actually peels off because the glue was only on the bottom layer. So once you get to your top layer, you'll know because of how thin it is, it's very often if it's a pale colour, you're really going to have a lot of um, transparency there as well. 
so you can really see through it. So this particular one had three layers. And as you can see, you can clearly see my white card stop through there. Now, something I'm going to do before I lay this down, and you don't have to do this, but it is absolutely my preference. I'm going to either stamp on this with a script or text stamp, or I'm going to find myself a book page to adhere onto here first, because that text is going to then show through in the background and it's going to look really beautiful. So there, I've just glued a book page over the top. Now, when I lay my napkin over, and you really can get a, an idea of how it's going to look dry before you put your glue on, you can see that beautiful text coming through. I think I'm going to have my floral down in the bottom right hand corner, that main floral bloom here, and that is just stunning. Okay, so now to add my Mod Podge. Now, it's really difficult to add this to um, directly to the napkin. You want to put it onto your firmer card base. So just picking up a little and spreading it really quite thinly, but smoothly is the most important thing. You need a nice, smooth layer. This is why I use a flat brush. And you want to put enough on, particularly if you're going onto a very porous surface like I am with the book page. You want to put enough on so that it won't dry too quickly. You want to have a little wiggle room when you put your napkin on there and just give it a chance to, for you to move it around to really smooth it down before it dries and holds sturdy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my napkin two corners there and place the center down and then gently from there smooth out to the edges and the same in that way too. Now you can cut away these edges and I would recommend leaving this to dry before you do so because if you try to cut this at the moment while it's damp you could end up tearing it instead but for the neatest finish I definitely prefer make sure your surface is dry put it on upside down and just add a thin line of glue all the way around the outside back edge just like so and then you can fold over your excess instead and this is just going to give you as I say a much neater finish just gently bringing it over this is part of the reason as well that we work on a panel rather than directly onto our card base because you can hide anything you need to on the reverse now obviously be careful about putting this down before the glue has dried how cool is that for a backing panel you've basically created your own pattern paper you could then die cut from this you could punch into this if you wanted to you can when it's dry you can stamp you can heat emboss all of those different techniques I just love to use this simply as a card panel so once it's dry I'll be placing it on there like so adding a simple sentiment and that will be my first card done so for the next card, I'm going to be working on a square, a smaller area, and I'm going to be cutting into this, but I'm going to be using this separated. So the first thing I need to do is very roughly just cut around my design here, and it is very, very roughly. Now something I also want to do with this particular one is just have the florals in the two corners here and kind of white space through the center. It's really easy to do. Just again, place your florals where you think you're going to need them and do a very rough cut around like so. There's one and then I'll have some more, probably something like that. I like that, that, that leaf just falling down. So just holding it there and cutting around leaving around about between half and one centimeter gap to trim or fold over later so that's where my design's going to sit now of course I've cut around this and it has an ivory background and it actually looks not very neat at all so this is where we're going to bring in our water brush and we're going to learn how to easily tear and shape our napkins now I prefer to do this while it's still got two three four layers 
um, it's much easier to control. So you just want a water pen here with clean water in. Although my bristles are blue, they're stained, so there's no colour coming off of these. And making sure that that's wet, and you might want to have a piece of kitchen towel so you can really squeeze some water down the bristles and pick up any droplets. Just trace around the edge of your design, making sure not to get water onto the design, but instead only around the outside edge of it. And then simply, I like to use my hand and hold sturdy the design where I don't want it to tear. So make sure I hold that intact and pull away the bit that I want to come away. Now you're going to get a feathered edge Depending on how much your water travelled and how much water you used, you may well go into your design ever so slightly. Let's just bring this down a little bit so you can see that. And I'm just going to gently work my way all around the design. Now, if you don't feel confident doing this quite so close, you can do it further away from the floral. So you leave maybe a centimetre or so of a gap. So as we can see there, when we lay this on our cardstock, that's much better than having the border like so. So I'm going to do that to this top one too. I think for this one, I'm going to add some stamping into the background. I'm doing this with a Memento ink. Memento ink will be waterproof once it's dry. So I do need to allow the stamping to dry thoroughly before I add my Mod Podge. Again, I always prefer to add my glue or my Mod Podge to the cardstock. It's so hard trying to add it to a really thin piece of napkin. And I try not to put my glue on top either. I try to keep the top of the napkin dry because this just allows more scope for adding other mediums later on without having the glossy surface. Once again, getting those crinkles out, being sure that that is perfectly smooth. Be aware of any glue on your fingers though. While you're smoothing this out, you don't want to have sticky fingers pulling at your napkin because you can tear it. Before putting this one onto my card, I'm going to use an ink of one of these colours all around the edge. I'm thinking of going for a green here. So there's my second napkin panel for me to finish off. Lastly, I want to use this beautiful, deep, dark coloured napkin. I absolutely love it with the black background. I'm going to do something ever so slightly different with this one. I'm still going to attach it to the panel in the same way as I have done already. So I'll do that now and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I blend this into the background on the card. So there's my panel and it looks stunning. It really does just like that. I want to add a little bit of colour just to have a, a bit of colour, almost as if it's running into the background, uh, just to kind of anchor it down a little. So I'm going to pick out one of the colours from the inside of the napkin, probably going to be one of these pinks. So I'm starting with Tattered Rose. This is an extremely pale colour in the Distress range. I'm using an Oxide. I put a lot of ink down onto the um, a, a piece of acetate. So this is basically a blending clear blending mat. I'm going to spritz with a bit of water, but not too much. I know roughly whereabouts that is going to be. And I'm just going to press some of this ink into two of the corners up here so that it kind of overlaps where the uh, napkin's going to go. And then I'm also going to just flip some in the hope that I get a few little splashes now, as I pop that down, I can see that's kind of overlapping just a little, but I think I might take a touch more. There's a blob there, so I might just extend that up a little bit. And I quite like to do this in a dabbing motion. Maybe a touch up there as well and a touch down here, like so. I think that will work. So that's just going to be a small amount of colour in the background, like I say, to anchor that down. So I'm going to use my heat tool and just dry this off. I don't like to add too much medium to my actual card base. As I said at the beginning, I like to prevent warping as much as possible for a professional finish, but a little bit like this should be okay. In addition, because I've got a lot of black in the background, I'm also going to add a small amount of kind of geometric as such, uh, or industrial style, stamping here again i'm going to focus on 
the bottom and top corners in opposite directions there bring that down a little I'm going to use the excess on the stamp to get a finer design there we go so that's just brought a little bit of the black in as well now of course this part is completely optional I do like to use different colors different textures different layers within my cards but you could have had that if I just flip this over completely on a clean base for a maybe a more sophisticated look so there's three very quick finished cards using those napkins and I've got so many more napkins that I can continue making cards with for days or weeks on end. So if you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget of course to subscribe to my channel and I think you're also going to really like this video just here. Take care everybody, I'll see you again very soon.